Hi everyone. In this video I'm going to demonstrate how to use Excel to do a box and whisker plot and a histogram of this large set of data I've got. So this is the next instalment in our project. So there'll be a Google uh, worksheet where you can record this. Once it's all there your teacher will advise you and so we're just going to get you to put your student ID number and then the answer you got for the area of the score. These are all made up so the process will still be the same though. Uh, now the first thing I want to do is highlight all of the data in that list. So that's all the different answers that pretending the different students got. Then I'll go to the insert menu. Underneath charts I'll use the icon in the corner to expand that out so I can see all the options. I'll go all charts and then down here I have box and whisker. There it is and I'll press OK. Now, sorry, I'll just uh, make that a little bit narrower and I'll put that over there a bit. I can change the title or I can take the title away if I want to. Uh, I can click on to this part in the middle and then I can go to format and I can change. I can make the outline darker. I can make the colour filling in there a little bit lighter so it's easier to see. Now you'll remember with the box and whisker we have the minimum value, we have the first quartile which represents 20, uh, the between here and here are 25% of the data values. We have the median which is the line, that's the next 25 or half of the values lie below that. Then we have the upper quartile, three quarters of the data lies below that. Then we have the maximum answer here. The X in the middle is the mean value. So Excel by default gives the maximum, the upper quartile, the median, the lower quartile, the minimum, and it also marks in the mean. The mean and the median are not exactly the same. Uh, they're both measures of central tendency. So that's the box and whisker diagram. Pretty straightforward. Uh, I think I might continue and do the histogram inside this same video. So to do the histogram, we need, first of all, what we call bins. These are the categories or the numbers that we're going to group into. We're not going to put uh, an individual block on our histogram for every single score. So I can see the minimum score there is just above 55,100 and the maximum is almost 55,300. So I'll start at 55,100 and I might jump up in, now you can try different things here, I might jump up in, in sizes of sorry, that's not jumping up, in sizes of 20. Uh, and if I highlight both of them, I can then drag to continue until I get to 55,300. The next heading is frequency. Let's make that a bit bigger. And before I type the formula, I want to highlight that entire block of cells which will have frequency. I start with an equals key. It's important I start it from the top then. The command is frequency. You see how it says data array? This is the data in this block here. So let's go back up to where I was. Put a comma. Then it says the bins array. These are the bins. I'll close the bracket. Now this bit is most important. If I want that frequency formula to go into all of the grey highlighted cells, I have to press Control, Shift, and then Enter. And there they are. Those are the frequencies. There were zero values between 55,100, uh, but between 55,100 and 120, there were 11 values. So that's that's how it's working. Now, now that they are highlighted. I could insert up here a column graph. I'll just pick the first one. I'll just uh, move this little guy across to the side a bit. Uh, once again, you can either change the title or you can get rid of the title. Uh, I think I'll click onto the bars. I'll go to format. I'll make the outlines darker. I'll make the shading a little bit lighter. The other thing I'll do with these, I'll do a right click on the columns and format 
and I don't like having big gaps between them so I'll take that down to 0% for the gaps. That's better. Now the numbers across the bottom by default just list how many bins there were. So I had 11 numbers in this list. If I do a, that was a left click, if I do a right click on that uh, across the bottom, sorry that's, is that it? Maybe that's it. No sorry that wasn't it. Uh, it's not that at all. It's going to the design tab and then to select data is what I mean, meant to do. Now once, once I'm there I have horizontal axis labels. I can edit those and I can highlight the numbers here just to be the labels on my horizontal axis. And there they are. So that's a lovely histogram of the different uh, answers. Now you might find the histogram looks a little different if you choose different size bins. If I had chosen, say, uh, instead of stepping in 20, stepping in 50, I might get a better looking histogram. But if I if make the bins too broad, it won't be good. There won't be many bars on the histogram. If I make the bins too narrow, it won't be good. There'll be too many bars and they'll all be really small. So you need to try a couple of different ones and see what you get. And it all really depends on how far between the maximum and the minimum value, which is why I did this one first. Okay, that's how you do histograms and box and whisker plots from raw data using Microsoft Excel. Hope that's helpful. Thanks for watching.